Welcome back guys. <clears throat> now, today I thought I'd take a look at Linux Mint. And this video is in the uh, Windows Alternatives series. And Linux Mint is one of the most popular Windows alternatives. If you go to distrowatch.com and you on the right hand side you take a look at the top distros Linux Mint is always number one and there's a good reason for that but the main reason for that is that when people when a user when a computer user wants to switch from Windows to Linux for whatever reason and they do a little bit of research Linux Mint comes up <clears throat> as a good choice and it is a good choice but the reason it co keeps coming up as the number one Linux distribution is because it's easy to install and once it's installed it's easy to maintain and easy to use especially coming from Windows so what I'd like to do today is <clears throat> go through the install process because if you're thinking about leaving Windows or running Linux in addition to Windows and there's nothing wrong with that most people when they decide that they'd like to explore alternative operating systems most people don't automatically cut the cord on Windows they keep both systems and once they become uh, comfortable with Linux and once they're convinced that Linux can be their operating system day in and day out at some point they will then make the decision to just run one operating system and hopefully that will be Linux now <clears throat> uh, I'm gonna go through the install I'll put the link to download the Linux Mint distribution. Um, you, you, you'll you need to do a couple things. One is <clears throat> if you're going to install on a separate petition you'll need to create a petition. Now you don't have to. You can let Linux Mint take care of that for you. Um, many people do that. But if you want to be proactive and you want to control how the distribution gets installed then you may want to create a petition up front before you do the install and the other thing that you'll need to do is you'll need to download the Linux uh, Mint distribution uh, download the ISO file and burn it to a USB drive a thumb drive now you can do that um, I recommended UNET bootin but many people chimed in and left me a comment saying it doesn't work very well within Windows so if you have Windows I would use Rufus R-U-F-U-S you can download Rufus or you can use Win32 Disk Imager those are two that will create in Windows it'll create a bootable Linux thumb drive with your ISO file that you download from Linux Mint. Now Linux Mint has four, uh, f actually five, one's not listed here. There is a uh, Linux Mint Debian edition which is a little bit of a different animal. We're not going to cover that today. But these are the Ubuntu distributions. You have the Cinnamon desktop, the Mate desktop, XFCE desktop, and the KDE. Most people choose coming from Windows most people will choose either Cinnamon or KDE my recommendation would be Cinnamon so once you once you determine what system you have whether it's a 32-bit system or a 64-bit most newer systems are 64-bit you'll need to check that you'll click on the download link for your machine whatever is appropriate for your machine you'll download it you'll use either Rufus or Win32 Disk Imager uh, to burn that uh, ISO file to a USB thumb drive and then you'll boot with that thumb drive. Once you boot up you will be looking at 
this screen. Once you boot into uh, your Linux Mint ISO on your USB, you're going to see this screen, and it's going to give you the opportunity to install Linux Mint. What you'll do is you will right-click and make sure you have uh, your internet, either a Wi-Fi or Ethernet access when you boot into this Linux Mint install. So you're going to either double click that icon or right click and select open. It's going to bring up the install screen and we're going to go through this step by step. The first, uh, the first really question that you have to answer is what language do you want? So in my case it's English. I'm going to click continue. Now it's going to ask if you want to install third party software for graphics and Wi-Fi. I always check this box. I have third party I need third party Wi-Fi drivers and graphics drivers so I always check that that's a decision you'll need to make um, if you have an Nvidia card or a uh, ATI card AMD or a Broadcom Wi-Fi you'll you'd be better off clicking on that so we're gonna continue Now it's going to go through and analyze your system. It's going to make some recommendations for the install. Now you can see the top option is erase disk and install Linux Mint. I'm using a virtual drive so I'm going to select that but you may want to uh, select another option. Now if you're running Windows and you have Windows on the system it's going to ask you if you want Linux Mint to be installed side by side with Windows. If you're going to keep your Windows installation then I would suggest that you select that option. Um, and then or you can put something else. Now if you click something else now that if you have created a petition for your Linux install that's what you would select and then you can pick the petition that you want to install to. So that'll be a decision you'll make when you get to the installation type. So I'm gonna erase disk and install Linux Mint and if it, it gives me a message if you continue changes will be written to the disk. Um, so uh, in my particular case, I've got SDA, which is a, a virtual drive. It's a 16 gigabyte drive. It's going to create two petitions, one for swap and one for, for my root petition, which is also going to double as my home petition. So I'm going to let it do its thing. I'm going to click continue. Now it's going to ask about my location. Uh, you'll want to select the closest major city. In my case, that is New York. I'll click Continue. It's going to verify your keyboard layout. In my case, English, US, everything is correct. In most cases, Linux Mint will be able to correctly identify your location and your keyboard requirement. So here we're, gonna, we're just going to enter whatever name that you want. Uh, I've got VirtualBox, so I'm going to let you can you can change that computer name to whatever you like. So I could take VirtualBox out and create and call it Len Mint. Whatever you want is fine. Going to pick a username that's fine, and I'm going to create a password. Okay, so my password is entered twice. And I'm going to select login automatically. Now, if you're having multiple users on this particular system, you may not want to check that. I'm the only one using this computer, so I'm going to log in automatically instead of requiring my password to log in. I am not going to encrypt my home folder. I don't have a need for that, but it is an available option for you. So now I'm going to click continue and it's going to go ahead and install the system. Now I'm going to pause the video while it goes through the installation process. 
and once it finishes then I will be back and we'll take a look at the uh, the end result of the install so I'll be right back okay now once the system installs the distribution automatically once it's done you'll see this message installation has finished you can continue testing uh, but until you restart the computer any changes you make will not be preserved so I'm gonna click restart now and it is going to in the virtual box it will go through the restart process uh, it's saying remove the installation medium and press enter so you would want to do that and now it should bring up the grub screen and we should have a working installation for Linux Mint okay so as you can see this is my working installation in VirtualBox this is what you'll be looking at now the the display uh, resolution is incorrect so I'm going to adjust that before we go any further go to display instead of 800 by 600 I'll go to uh, 1366 by 768 we'll keep that click apply keep okay so now this is my resulting install as you can see now um, Linux Mint is a very attractive desktop environment this is the cinnamon install it's the desktop that I prefer for new installations because it is something that Windows users would find very comfortable the menu is very self-explanatory and one that you would get used to pretty easily but again it's take your time look around explore if you have any questions the Linux Mint community has a forum I would suggest that you register you click that link that you register and pay a visit and go through especially the newbie questions you can see that you're not alone thousands and thousands of users are converting from Windows to Linux every day and they have questions and you will have questions so make full use of this forum register and participate and you'll find that you'll become acclimated to your Linux desktop in no time at all. Go back to the Linux Mint website, read up on the monthly news, take a look at what's going on. Uh, you can get lots of information to help you in your transition. So guys, that is about as easy as it gets. Installing Linux Mint and becoming a new Linux user. So if you have any questions for me, put up the question in the uh, comment section and I'll do my best to answer the question or I'll point you in the right direction. So thank you for stopping by the channel today. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Take care.